At times it might be hard to take stock, have a sight at the world, and try to figure out how it's getting changed in actual time. The last 50 years have been signified by an information revolution that's come to be so infiltrated in our regular lives that it's not hard to let slip that how breaking through it is. Gary Kasparov creates an astonishing argument for mirroring on our altering times. He guides us through the types of questions we must be inquiring about technology and what we may presume of this fast-changing world. It's a task he's quite enough to do. Being one of the history's best chess players, he was marked against a group of computer scientists and their advanced technology. Can their system beat him? Kasparov's sparring with IBM's Deep Blue in the late 1990s settled that question. What's more, the mechanics of chess and artificial intelligence have a lot in common. So when you think about it, you can learn a lot about the workings of the modern technological world through the cultural story of chess. Let Kasparov take you on a journey through the history and the future of artificial intelligence, chess, and computers. Chapter 1 Whilst chess's name in the West is not very well known, it is admired in Russia. Chess is an old game, and it's had a scene in Western culture for centuries. Yet whilst it's revered by a lot of people, it's most of the time from a social distance. That might be down to the reality that chess has a fair reputation that it couldn't shake. In the West, chess is regarded as a type of game for nerds. In most cases, chess fans are expected of being somebody having no life other than the multiple squares of the chessboard. The writer, Gary Kasparov, has excluded himself out of his way to struggle prejudices like that. Yet, in spite of all the seminars he has given in which he mentions things like politics and history, the media have resisted continuing to draw him and other chess players as eccentric weirdos. Yet indeed, they are just simple guys with exceptional talent. It's not easy to change long-held cultural taboos, chess players still stay at the bottom of any school social ranking. Yet there are indications of unhurried improvement in the U.S., with the help of the introduction of school chess events. Young children are learning, without prejudgments, that chess could indeed be a joy. The American side of chess stays in fine opposition to the circumstances in Russia. In it, chess has long been respected. When Kasparov was getting bigger, Russia was standing still as a part of the Soviet Union. Chess was extensively played and widely encouraged. As a result, it didn't have any chance to have the unfavorable evocations it had in the West. Other than that, it had quite a similar status as any other mainstream sport, such as baseball in the U.S. In reality, the convention regarding chess players and instructors is something to be highly regarded traces back to the Tsarist period. Although a couple of aristocrats were killed in the period of the Russian Revolution, the aristocratic convention of playing chess still was there. Rather, the communists improved and motivated it. They surprisingly went as far as to excuse elite chess players from military service in the continuing Russian civil war so that they would join in Soviet chess contests. Chapter 2 computers developed from only about winning chess beginners to competitive grandmasters. While computational science took its primary provisional steps in the 1950s, a couple of people doubted to which direction that novel technology would lead. Forecasts of utopian and dystopian scenarios dominated by computers were widespread. Yet it was quite a tad far-fetched as you recall that the initial PCs didn't get anywhere near to have the capacity to perform chess. Scientists did experiment with it. In 1956, a center in Los Alamos, New Mexico created the first chess playing device. The thing was called Maniac 1, and it was one of the really first devices which had sufficient capacity to keep a chess program in its memory. It pounded roughly close to 1000. With that said, the device's capabilities were continued to be limited. The researchers had to use a decreased numbered board of 36 squares that included doing away with the bishops. The computer finally lost to a pro player, although they were able to make him playing not having a queen. Yet, this same year, the computer accomplished to win over a chess beginner. It was the initial time in history where artificial intelligence had beaten a normal person in an intellectual game. Before so long, devices were strong sufficient for challenging pros. The velocity of development is vastly told by Moore's law claiming that computers' operation speeds without a doubt double every two years. Until 1977, computers had the capacity to challenge the top 5% of real players. They are prone to perform some occasional game-losing mistakes, yet their all-inclusive powerful defensive and calculated moves most of the time respond to this failing. In addition to that, a novel algorithm, refined by computer scientists in the time of the 70s, created a world of difference. It was named Alpha Beta and it let the bits of intelligence automatically refuse every move that was less successful than the sample being examined at that moment, decreasing the count of moves it needed to assess. Consequently, 
devices started to be quicker in computing feasible actions and surprisingly had the capacity to think a couple of onwards. Chapter 3, Devices are putting humans out of work, yet it's not anything to care about for now. It's not tough to expect that the occupation of the supermarket cashier will shortly be something of the former times. After everything, self-checkout devices are toughly making their space in supermarkets. This instance is expressive of a greater trend. Devices are making humans out of jobs, specifically these with occupations in the service industry. Arguments that humans confront machines trace back to the rise of the Industrial Revolution as agricultural and manufacturing devices began to substitute for human workers. After, in the time period of the 60s and 70s, neatly designed devices efficiently made skilled laborers for example watchmakers or laboratory assistants out of date. Lastly, the information revolution started to get in the game and take the lee even though it was following the beginning of the internet. After that blow, thousands and millions of customer service and support professions were cleaned out, workers for instance bank tellers and travel agents had themselves vastly substituted by online services. It is of course an issue of time before the period machines begin to destroy even the most reputable jobs. Yes, it can even replace doctors and lawyers. With that being said, there's no necessity to get tender about the fact that devices could now shoulder human labor. Technological development has always been a positive thing. Human civilization has flourished in big part since we've implemented our creations to decrease the necessity for human force. As a consequence, we've witnessed peaks in the standard of living and the development of human rights. It is really an indication of our advantage that we could live in air-conditioned places, flip through apps or smartphones which give us a way to all of humankind's knowledge and also still grumble about the fact that manual labor is being got rid of. That only signifies that we need to educate ourselves to a custom. Things aren't going back to what they were once upon a time. Clerks, cashiers, and call center employees the work of which has been substituted by artificial intelligence will not go back to manufacturing jobs, for instance. Rather, they would have to be guided towards other new kinds of technological and service occupations during the time they come up. Chapter 4, Artificial Intelligence is Getting Better Fast, Creating New Kinds of Chess Playing Devices In September 2016, Kasparov visited a robotics event in Oxford where he had the option to talk legitimately with a robot called Artie. Such talking robots may even now appear to be truly futuristic, however, they make certain to turn into a basic part of the day-by-day -day life very soon as advancements in artificial intelligence proceed. It's for quite some time been remained constant that computers can think of arrangements, however not at all like people, they can't define questions. Be that as it may, that is not true anymore. PCs would already be able to pose inquiries, yet they can't, up now, realize which questions are the significant ones. Any gadget can ask you an inquiry that has been coded into it. It simply needs a brief and a computerized reaction that goes with it, for this situation as an inquiry. That is the way gadgets like Google Assistant, or Amazon's Alexa work. Nonetheless, regardless of whether the communication appears to be authentic, it's in reality simply dependent on basic data analysis. Researchers are presently attempting to see whether machines can define their inquiries legitimately from the information they've acquired. They'll no longer need a lot of human props for activating automated response questions. Machines may one day even develop past that. As artificial intelligence creates, they may astonish us with the information they produce as well as by their methods. How about we take a gander at how that may function in chess? Up to this point, chess PCs had chess strategies straightforwardly customized into them. They realized that a queen was worth more than a rook, for instance, since this knowledge was coded into the program. Be that as it may, presently, scientists are attempting to create chess computers by simply programming them with the most essential chess rules. From that point onward, they're intended to work out everything else without anyone else, which means they can think of totally new tactics and plays that they could likewise instruct people. Chapter 5, For Mankind, Chess is Mental, For Artificial Intelligence, It's Nothing But Strategic. It's a continuing debate if chess must be regarded as a sport or not. The thing indubitable is that the nervous exhaustion which is felt having finished a chess contest is equal to exhaustion felt at the end of a track race. This is because chess is eventually a mental game. From the beginning of 2003, Kasparov has been working on chess matches played by popular grandmasters, involving his own. He showed out what he has found in his book My Great Predecessors and claimed that even one of the best chess players does a lot of strategical wrongdoings. Without a doubt, it's not since they don't know any better. It's because they're worried or mentally worn out by their rivals. 
the German chess contestant Emanuel Losker who earned the title of world chess champion for 27 years from 1894 until 1921, typified the psychological take on to chess. The idea behind that was the finest move doesn't need to be necessarily made the most sense strategically, yet that it must make a competitor uncomfortable as much as possible. This strategy of player needs a neat analysis of a rival's game not after a match starts. Frailties should be identified, but also the upcoming moves of the opponent most probable to mentally wear out him or her. No rules like that are around as long as AIs play chess. An individual will every time have a mental reaction to the pressure of a match. Yet computers do not have emotions, not only in game but also out of chess games. For them, it's solely a matter of tactics. Until 1985, computers were strong enough so far to calculate every single combination of actions following the upcoming three or four rounds and decide on the most rational one. Yet, when the player was capable of strategizing like five moves before, it was so expected of him to beat a computer. Chapter 6, Giving Computers Large Amounts of Data Might Result in Genius Programs yet they could also be liable to mistakes. It's an accepted way of thinking that success settles upon inborn ability. Be that as it may, as Malcolm Gladwell wrote in Outliers, this is arguable. What makes a difference is a huge number of long periods of training. For people, Gladwell's thesis holds some truth. Be that as it may, most definitely, there's no vulnerability. Beast force is what matters. Donald Mitchie, a British researcher in the field of artificial intelligence and AI pioneer, was among the first to truly exploit this when he started matching PCs with a lot of crude information. He tried the idea in the round of spasm tacto in 1960. Typically, you may give a PC a progression of rules to apply in a game. Be that as it may, Mitchie gave the PC various instances of game moves and permitted it to work out essential principles from that point. We really observe such an AI procedure all the time with modern translation projects, for example, Google Translate. They don't really know much about the dialects. Rather, they've quite recently been taken care of a great many model sentences with comparing translations, made by individuals. In view of these, they're ready to bits together with a sensible translation of some random content. Such frameworks are not dependable, in any case. PCs that depend on colossal measures of information can likewise make huge blunders. During the 1980s, Mitchie attempted to make a chess playing machine. He and some different scientists stuffed the PC with crude information, a great many chess moves played during Grandmaster games. The PC turned into an extraordinary player, yet one that would sometimes do astounding things, as out of nowhere penance its sovereign for no obvious explanation. The thing that could have happened was that the PC had gained from the Grandmasters that giving up the sovereign could be a move that flagged triumph the PC had neglected to perceive that the gambit possibly worked when numerous different parameters were set up. Maybe it got everything except at the same time nothing by any means. Chapter 7, Losing is easy no time yet playing against AIs might show you how to lose with dignity. For many people, a play is just a play and nothing more than that. Yet there are also these who burst in tears or go crazy when they get beaten. The writer, in his chess playing times, was barely a blubberer, yet he wasn't simply a contented defeated person, too. The moment he got beaten in chess round, he at times suffered nights without sleep for days after. Even sometimes, he'd even go outrageous at award ceremonies unless he brings home the winner's award. Indeed, Kasparov isn't sorry for this thing. As long as he's known it, to be a good contestant, your hate of losing has to be bigger than your fright of competing. If this is not the case, you are going to just quit. Thanks to this, the writer didn't require to get beaten often. Of the 2,400 career games he played, he just got beaten 170 games. Yet these games were against mankind. Playing computers was the whole other story completely. Kasparov got beaten in a game against an AI for the first instance in May 1994, in Munich. It was called Fritz III. Kasparov did well at the beginning and got an advantage in terms of position. Yet after, he made only one tactically illogical move. Instantly, the AI made a comeback to the game. The fault was something to be understood. It was a blitz chess tournament a type of game in which gamers most of the time take trifling seconds to think about every action. Even though Kasparov eventually won the whole tournament, it was the first tournament in which a computer had accomplished to win a match against a chess world champion. Kasparov went on to compete against stronger computers, IBM's Deep Blue, under tournament rules a few years later in 1996. That case it was a complete match over six games. Kasparov accomplished to win the initial match, yet at the rematch the following year. Deep Blue was the one who won.
It was a very close shot, yet at the end of the day, Deep Blue could estimate too many feasible alternatives for each action which Kasparov was not able to catch up. It signified a major glory for computes and artificial intelligence. It was a second of understanding for Kasparov. He might now usually get defeated by AIs, and they were certain to get nothing but stronger in the following years. Also with this, Kasparov stepped himself down to the knowledge of defeat. Chapter 8 Chess is no unusual to foul play, and AIs will not change this. As watchers, we most of the time observe the fabulous sides of serious games. In any case, in the background, in the shadows, unfairness is not really surprising. Competitive chess is the same. From afar, these stories can show up very joyful. Take the bitter competition of Anatoly Karpov and Viktor Korchnoi, the two prevailing players during the 1970s. At the 1978 World Championships in the Philippines, Karpov recruited a psychologist called Dr. Zukar to gaze eagerly at Korchnoi all through the match, trying to hypnotize or disrupt him. Korchnoi would not be beaten. During that championship, he brought some Indian sect members to meditate and gaze at Karpov and his clinician, to threaten them. Chess is an intricate and excellent game, however, it, at last, demonstrated basic enough for PCs to ace. That much was in proof when Deep Blue beat the writer, utilizing only the processing power accessible in the late 1990s. The following test for software engineering will be to get PCs to ace progressively complex prepackaged games with a lot of greater number of squares and factors than chess. Deep thinking, where machine intelligence ends and human creativity begins by Gary Kasparov, Mig Greengard, with, book review. Artificial intelligence is fast in getting better than human intelligence. It has had the capacity to win over world-class chess gamers at the game for over 20 years, yet much more is to be supposed. For now, computers are using brute computing power in their skills to process great amounts of data in order to do this. Yet a new revolution in artificial intelligence is in the offing. When computers could begin to process the data, to make questions from it, also to develop answers independent of human help, well then we are going to have precisely begun a new era.